welcome to our latest Take a Seat interview. Um, I'm really looking forward to hearing a little bit more from John um, at Aberty University. And we've, you know, over the years done quite a bit of kind of connecting and collaborating over food innovation amongst other things. So, um, yeah, this will be interesting. And of course, you know, some of these questions are a little bit random, John. So apologies for, <laughs> for asking you some slightly daft things, but they're super interesting. So um, let's just kind of kick us off if you just tell us a little bit about you and what you do. Yeah so I'm a senior lecturer in new product development so I work with the students on developing products from um, from the beginning to the end so commercialization um, and then I also work with the Scottish food and drink industry particularly looking at um, small to medium-sized projects where we could help innovate within their company so it's things from uh, coming up with new product designs to sensory testing to um, looking at their food safety all sorts of different things that we can do to offer support for local businesses to really um, push them and make them more successful. Um, can you tell us what you like best about what you do? Is there a story to that? Yeah so I think the one thing that I'm really interested in is I'm a, a person that gets, well, I shouldn't say bored easily, but I like to have a lot of different ranges of different activities. And I find that when you work with industry, it isn't just one area that you're looking at. It's you look at one bit over here and then it also you're looking over there. And so I really like the versatility of it. And particularly with Scottish food and drink companies, they are smaller than other um, places in the UK. And so the actually get to see the whole business running and I think that's a real nice thing to see because you actually get to affect not just one part of the company but the whole of it so I think that's a really nice thing. Brilliant. Um, what is your favourite time of the year and why? <laughs> favourite time of the year? Ooh, um, I would say just after May because that's when all the students finish uh, and I can <laughs> have a sigh of relief and all my marking is done. Um, but it's also a really nice time of the year because they start getting jobs and it's really nice to see how excited they become by getting their first job straight out of university. So it's a really, it just makes you feel that you've done the best job because they've been able to come do the studying and they've got a job at the end of it. And I think that's a really nice stepping stone for them. Yeah, oh, that's really lovely, actually. You know, we've had all sorts of answers to that from, you know, um, April because it's my birthday to you know Christmas because of the family but that's 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 really lovely actually I like that <laughs> um we've been doing all these interviews over about the last 18 months or so and you know I've kind of talked to people while we've been in you know deepest of lockdowns and and kind of coming out of restrictions and we're in you know I think what what we're calling beyond level zero and um, which means we haven't got a lot of restrictions at the moment but there are still I think we're just um learning you know what we can do what what's allowable and, and what's not so um what's the thing that you you're either are still missing about what what you know we're not quite back doing or or the thing that you've missed most during lockdown or restrictions yeah it's been a it's been a roller coaster I've had a two and a half year old now three year old um, living with me, well, not living with me, <laughs> but looking after. Um, and my wife works in the hospital, so she was in full time. So I found it quite difficult with a, a two and a half year old. And the one thing that we're missing the most is really the swimming and the not planning things before. Yeah. So I'm a very much a person that is a spontaneous person. And I wake up in the morning and go, oh, the sun's nice. Let's go and do something. And to have to book things and organize before I go, oh, it just it drives me mad. So um, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, I tried to get into uh, swimming and I couldn't get anywhere in the whole of Tayside. There was nowhere that was swimming because it was all fully booked. And it just I just can't wait for mm -hmm. the time when I don't have to prepare <laughs> for things. I think that's my biggest uh, my biggest thing is I'm not uh, disorganized. I'm a very organized person, but when it comes to my family life, I like to just wake up one day and do something different. And yeah, booking things is just not my my key thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and actually, you know, you, you're. I think about a year or so ago, um, I talked to somebody, and they said the same thing. And it was, yeah, that that lack of just being able to, you know, make last minute plans, or you know, decide that you were going to go, uh, you know, to see friends and and go out with friends, or 
yeah, it's been, it has, it's been really challenging, hasn't it? And, you know, um, but yeah, for people like you and me that like to wing it, it's not the best, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. And I get my wife there going, well, you should have booked it. And I'm like, no, that's not a good use of my time now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so I'm very off topic, as as is as usual with me. But that strikes me as that's what that's the battle of wills in our house as well. You know, my husband will say, "So, shall we do something at the weekend?" And there's this pregnant pause, as if he thinks somehow I'm going to, you know, based on the 24 years he's been with me, somehow I'm going to have changed and gone. Here's our itinerary. I've booked us in six places. No, so so we end up, you know at the very last minute going did you do something did you because I thought you might <laughs> <laughs> yeah this fucking thing is just it's driving me mad and I can't wait for it to just be over and I can just walk in and go right today I fancy doing this I'll go <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And it's very difficult for businesses as well to kind of manage all that, isn't it? Um, but yeah, we're definitely, definitely coming out the other side of this. I'm I'm sure of it. Um <laughs> So there's been a lot of change to everybody's role and everybody's business since the pandemic hit. But what would you kind of, is there a standout change that's affected you and, and what happens in your world? Yeah, so um, two things. One with the teaching, I'm now more online than I ever have been and trying to enthuse students through talking to them <laughs> is very difficult when you're not there to read a room and see if they're getting everything. So that's a real big difficulty. The one thing that I would say is a very positive is that I can speak to a lot of people from all around the country of Scotland without moving from my chair. Um, and it just means that instead of out going and seeing a bakery up in Loch Ness um, and taking a whole day to get there and a whole day to get back, then I could see them in you know half an hour to an hour just doing doing a Teams meeting um, and then meet with somebody else from Aberdeenshire or somewhere. You know, so I'm not. I find that quite useful and I think that's going to be something that I'll pick up in the future and it, although I did quite like driving around and meeting new places and going to new new things um, I think I'll still keep some of that but for quick meetings just to find out if it's a suitable place then I think that's mm -hmm. it's going to be really useful. Yeah yeah well and I think that slightly ties into my next question which is just asking about the future so what does the future hold for, for, I guess, your role, your department, the, the university? So I think it's um, the future is bright. I think the food industry is growing. I think that um, with Brexit <laughs> and all the complications that that brings, mm -hmm. um, there can be opportunities, there can be um, real serious uh, need for innovation and I think that the more people know of the facilities and the education and everything that's at the university and uh, not only just students but staff the projects that we can do I really think that we're best placed to help not just Tayside but the rest of Scotland with some kind of recovery. Um, I think also with the changing in consumer habits and this whole um, environmental problem that's coming along with climate change I think that feeds into some of the work that we do as well. So I see the future being quite bright in terms of needing us, um, but I see it being quite, um, if you're a business, I would say that uh, knowing that they've got support on their doorstep is probably going to be less of a headache for them. Mm -hmm, absolutely. I mean, we've we've heard all sorts of stories, you know, about the, the need for there to be more UK production of food and that, you know, as you say that, that helps with the the air miles of the food that we're eating. Um, maybe we'll we'll get back to kind of a bit of seasonality where we we think things tasted better um, when we we ate with the seeds. But you know, you, I guess we're, you kind of look back with a bit of rose tinted glass on some of that because with vertical farming, you know, maybe we'll we'll not have seasons. So yeah, I'm not sure about that. But but I know that when when we've done um you know when we've brought people businesses in to see the the innovation labs that you're working out of and just you know the way that the students can get involved in in kind of testing it's fascinating but also you know as you say let, let making sure that businesses know that that is on their doorstep to to kind of be be used is is hugely important yeah and i think that the that it's a, a funny thing advertise uh a, a well-kept secret but in a way that 
it shouldn't be kept to the secret. But as soon as people know what the facilities we have, they, they really do see the benefits of being one so close to us, but also the fact that we're open to, to help where we can. And if we can't help you, then we signpost you into who can, because we've got networks within the universities within Scotland and further afield that can even help. Uh, I know for one, which is really exciting, we're um, just bringing in um, a university in Singapore that um, does consumer testing. And one of the key things that we're wanting to do is get into the Far East market. Uh, so if you want to get into the Far East market, then you need to really see what the consumer knows and likes about that. And having the links between us and, and them over in Singapore is going to be a really, really nice project. Uh, so I hope that comes to fruition and then we can offer that as a service to food and drink companies in Scotland that fancy going abroad. Because, you know, Feeding people here is, is great and it's what's needed, but there's also the opportunity to export. And that is now the Far East of Asia, the, it's a growing economy, well, it's a very growing economy. It's, mm -hmm. it's definitely worth investigating. Um, and they have complete different tastes to what we have. So although we're quite good at getting Scottish whiskey in there, are we good at getting other things? Um, it'd be quite nice to see. So that's something that I'd like to offer in the future. Yeah, that's really interesting because, you, as you say, the the culture and the consumer um, tastes are completely different. And, um, you know, I know we do quite a bit of work helping Scottish businesses think about different markets, but you have to be able to use a test. And, you know, it's not going to be feasible for many micro or small businesses to kind of get to their customers. So that's that's really interesting. I look forward to hearing more about that. That's fab. Um, I've been asking people about their lockdown escape bucket list and um, you might have already ticked off all of yours, but is there anything still on your lockdown escape bucket list that you've not done? Um, I'm trying to think. I think when you had, uh, when I've got a small child, it was very difficult to, <laughs> to pick all these uh, things that you wanted to do and, and, and where you wanted to go and all this kind of stuff. So I think I've probably done the most of it. One thing that I really enjoyed doing over the lockdown was um, perfecting barbecuing. So I'm a, I'm a smoker of food. So I really like like pulled pork and brisket that's done like eight, nine, 12 hours on a barbecue with coals. So I really enjoyed doing that kind of stuff. Um, and every chance, even in the winter, if it's not raining, I'm out the back garden with, uh, with my barbecue. So I really enjoyed doing that. So that's a really um, key thing that yeah, I think I just take it as it is, and you know, I'm a food person, so anything related to food, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, what is the best piece of advice you've ever received, and why? Oh, that was a difficult one. Um, I think I had a colleague who said to me, uh, "Never say no," because if you say no to something it gets around and people start realizing that you're you're not wanting to do what do the work that you're you're after and always say yes but make sure that when you're saying yes to stuff that the other person knows exactly what that entails um and i was like that's a really good piece of advice because if you say no to everything then you don't get anywhere but if you say yes to everything you you obviously don't you get too much on your plate but if you say yes to stuff and manage it I think that's the, the key to it. So yeah, good bit of advice and I will use that all the time. So yeah, I will say yes to most things. Um, but it's then, yes, I can help, but I can only do this bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and maybe this that leads on to my, my next question, but do you have a message for people out there about the things you've learned yourself about the world of working business? What would that message be? Yeah, I think, um, the world of business and work is small um, and the greatest thing you can have is a name for yourself. So my piece of advice is to, if you're going to do something, you do it and you do it well and you make sure that um, you don't, and it's something you don't do very well, <laughs> you bury it. <laughs> 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 or you make sure that um, you manage it so that it doesn't come back on you because it is a small world. And, and particularly the Scottish food and drink industry, uh, let alone being in just the Tayside region, is very small and your name gets passed around very quickly. So it's very, um, you can be well known for being good or you can be well known for not being so. 
So I like to be well known for doing good. Yeah, yeah, that, that it's that's a fascinating question, and and there's been so many different answers, but actually they're all they're all really brilliant. Um, yeah, it's just great to kind of hear all those different things about um about what people have learned. There's always something, isn't there, to to learn from somebody else. I do I do really like that. Um, well. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and, and answer some of my sensible and random questions, <laughs> John. Um, how do people get in touch with you if they fancy a chat? Yeah, so um, you can find me on Abate website. <laughs> That's always um, a good one. But you can have my email address. And um, shall I just give the email address out here? Or yep. Yeah. So it's uh, j.wilkin, which is W I L K I N at Abate, which is A-B-E-R-T-A-Y, at dot A-C dot U-K. Um, and forgive me if I'm not instant in my reply. I do get quite a few of them. Um, but I always reply and I always follow it up. Brilliant. Well, again, thank you so much for, for taking the time to come on. It's been brilliant to take a seat with you. Um, and uh, I look forward to kind of hearing more and getting back into the, the labs with some of our businesses when we can. So, um, yeah, all the all the best and thank you very much. Thank you.